Hey, this is John with Two Moose Home Inspections. Let's talk about what you can do to remedy your oxygen permeable pipes that are wreaking havoc on your heating system. Welcome to Inspector Insights. This is the third and final video in this series about oxygen permeable pipe. And to recap, a hydronic system is a heating system that heats a liquid and circulates it through a loop, such as an in-floor radiant heating system or heated driveway. And when oxygen diffusion is not controlled, the metal components of the system will rust and fail prematurely. Oxygen barrier pipe can be identified by a shiny gloss surface or the labels DIN4726 or PEX aluminum PEX. If the pipe has a matte surface, looks like a rubber hose, or if it's gray in color, then you might have a bad pipe. Now, let's talk about possible solutions. If the bad type of pipe you have is Entran 2, Entran 3, or polybutylene, the risk of pipe failure, which would result in damage to your house, may push you towards pricing out a retrofit solution. Some systems can be retrofit using hydronic baseboard heating, in-ceiling hydronic heating, or staple up in-floor heating. These types of retrofit options are often expensive, but protecting your home and valued personal items from leaking pipes is priceless. If the bad type of pipe you have is a non-barrier pipe, there are several remedies that can range in price from free for now to very expensive. First and foremost, with any of these issues, you can choose to do nothing. That would be a free for now option. There's always a knee-jerk reaction when an issue shows up in an inspection report that something must be done, but identifying issues in the report doesn't mean you need to do anything. Some systems that should have failed 10 years ago are still running strong, and you can wait until the system fails, you can budget for a new system and change it when you have the funding, or you can fix it now. Even when the system fails, you may choose to replace the parts with the least expensive option instead of installing a more expensive, non-ferrous option such as stainless steel, copper, or brass. Ultimately, the less expensive ferrous system will still fail prematurely, but replacing it again may still be less expensive than a complete retrofit. So what's the next least expensive option from doing absolutely nothing? Chemicals are relatively inexpensive and they can be used to neutralize the oxygen in the system. These chemicals will need to be monitored annually and adjusted by a professional. Otherwise, the chemicals could cause more harm than good, but they are a viable option if you're trying to prolong your current system's life. The next option's price is considered middle of the road for this type of repair and it's often the preferred method. The installation of a heat exchanger will separate the parts of your system that can rust from the parts of your system that introduce oxygen. Stainless steel won't rust and it's perfect for this application. There are three common types of heat exchangers, shell and tube, shell and coil, and flat plate. Shell and tube heat exchangers are rarely used in residential settings because they are very large, they're prone to fouling deposits, and they suffer from parasitic heat loss, which means heat is lost to the room. Shell and coil heat exchangers are mostly used to heat domestic hot water and not to heat the house. Flat plate heat exchangers are the most common type of heat exchangers, and they can be classified as brazed plate heat exchangers or plate and frame heat exchangers. Brazed plate heat exchangers, BPHEs, are the industry standard for residential systems as they have no moving parts, no rubber seals, no gaskets, and a compact size that's self-cleaning with turbulent flows and up to 95% of the BPHE's materials are used to transfer heat. The main takeaway from this is that stainless steel heat exchangers will keep the liquid that is in the oxygen permeable pipes physically separated from the liquid in the boiler loop, which means the issue of oxygen diffusion corrosion has been solved without needing to replace any pipes. The most expensive option is to install a new non-ferrous boiler and components, but if your boiler is already failing or past its design life, this may be the most practical solution. If you're upgrading your boiler to a unit that has a stainless steel or copper heat exchanger, you will also want to upgrade the valves and circulators to a non-ferrous material such as stainless steel, copper, or brass. Most indirect sidearm water heaters are already stainless steel because they interact with the open loop drinking water that is highly oxygenated, so there is normally no need to upgrade this component. We have yet to inspect a perfect house, and we see a significant number of houses in our area that have oxygen permeable pipe, and we wanna let you know that oxygen permeable pipe is not a deal breaker. It's just something to consider when buying a house, similarly to how you may consider the expense of updating a kitchen or a bathroom. However, I understand it isn't as much fun to plan a heating system upgrade as it is to plan a kitchen remodel. Hopefully we provided you with some educational material, but if you have any additional questions or would like to schedule a home inspection, please visit twomoosehomeinspections.com. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.